I'm a big fan of Core Framework and using it with Bricks Builder. It's a really powerful combination for building really easy, scalable websites. But there are a couple of things that may lead to some confusion when you connect the two things up and you don't do some of the groundwork. One of the key areas is dealing with color palettes. Let me just quickly demonstrate what I'm talking about and why you might get a little bit frustrated. And then I'm going to show you exactly how you can handle this and set things up for absolute ease moving forward with your color palettes, your syncing things, your light and your dark modes, and all those kinds of good things. If we take a look at this example, I've got a couple of sections on here. And if we go and take a look at switching between the light and the dark mode, and this is just a core framework option, you can see some things work okay and other things kind of fall apart. Now, this isn't a problem when it comes to core frameworks. There's nothing they're doing wrong. It comes down to the fact that we need to do a little bit of groundwork when it comes to working with Bricks Builder. But I also want to show you how you can simplify the process to get everything up and running super quickly, and also how using a blueprint or at least exporting your setup makes life a lot easier when you want to start a new site. So let's take a look, first of all, at the color palette and how we need to set a few things up. So first of all, the color palette that is set up by default when it comes to core framework has a lot of extra colors and shades and tints and things inside there, which just makes it a little bit more difficult to get to grips with what you're doing and what applies and where it applies and so on. Let me show you what I'm talking about. If we take a look at this section and open up the background color, you can see we've got a bunch of different colors inside your tints and shades and so on. And if you hover over these, you can see you've got the variables for primary D2, primary D3, tertiary L, uh, you kind of get the idea. What do you choose and where do you choose it and how do you use it? Well, let's make our life a lot easier by stripping out all that extra information, strip back our color palette just so we can set things up. And if we want more, we can add them in later. So coming into the core framework settings, making sure we've got the color palette selected. You can see we've got our brands and our secondary and tertiary and so on. If we expand these out, you'll see a lot of them will have generate shades and you may have various different numbers in here. I think the default is four. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn all these off. We are gonna enable dark mode. I'm gonna do this for all of these right now. So what we're gonna do, just disable the things we don't want, enable the things we do. Now you'll notice when it comes to these colors, it'll give you two different colors. One is your light mode, one is your dark mode. We can change those later and we will take a look at those. So all you need to do to make your life easier is disable all the tints and shades, enable dark mode if you want to use it and just do that. So I'm gonna quickly run through and do that for all of these. There we go. We've set everything up there. Now let me quickly explain what's going on here with the enable dark mode option. You notice when we have that disabled, we get one single color. When we enable the dark mode, we now get two. These are the color previews for the light and the dark modes. So you probably will wanna change these based upon the design that you have. And we will take a look at that in a moment. But for now, let's save those changes and we now have a much simpler color palette. If you don't want to use any of these, for example, you may not use tertiary colors. Well, you can simply hover over, choose the three dots, click to delete, and then confirm it, and you can remove that from your color palette. You can always add colors back in. You can add shades and tints and things back in. All these things are totally flexible, but to start off with, strip them out, have a simple color palette, and it makes life a lot easier. Now let's just jump back into Bricks and take a look at how this looks so much easier to work with. Now, if you're getting value from this video, why not hit that subscribe button to be notified as soon as new content is added. I release videos every single week on a range of different topics, including tons to do with Bricks Builder. Hit that subscribe button down below and be notified as soon as new content is added. Anyway, let's get back on with the tutorial. So coming back to the exact same section, coming to the same background options, click and open this up, and now our color palette is so much simpler to work with. Now we can easily hover over these and see exactly what the name of each one is, the variable that's associated with it. And this is where the beauty of working with a CSS framework and bricks really open up a ton of possibilities. We can reference those variables, and if we change something inside core framework, we're just changing a variable value, which will reflect throughout the entire site. So now we've got a simplified color palette. The next thing we need to do is open up the settings into our theme styles. And if you haven't already created one, create a theme style. It's a case of clicking on the create, giving it a name and saving it. It's as simple as that. I've already done that and I've got some basic values set up inside you. If you want to see more about this, I've got a video dedicated to this you can check out right here. If you want to find out more, check that out after this one.
OK, so conditions are set up for this for the entire website. Other than that, we've just got some basic parameters. So the first thing we want to do is come into our color section. This is where the default colors for things like your buttons and so on and various different parts of the overall design, especially when you pull in templates, they may have using these sort of primary color, secondary color and so on. So what we're going to do is we're going to map those core framework colors we've created and map those to the actual theme style colors. So for example, come into our primary color, click. Well, there's our primary. We can see if we hover over it, we'll select it. Come to our secondary, there's our secondary, we'll select it. Your light color, you can see we've got a variable called light. We've got one for dark. Border color can be useful, so we can do on this. We can select, for example, our a border color. We'll choose this base, for example. Info color, we'll choose our green color from there. And for our warning and our danger colors, we'll set this red. But like I say, you can configure additional colors. Let's say our success color is going to be our tertiary color. So we've mapped those colors. OK, cool. That's the first part. Now let's come in to things like general. And inside there, there's our site background. Well, let's use one of our global colors. Click to open this up. Open up the UI. And we're going to choose the value for BG body. Once we select that, you'll see that changes the color here. Now, I want to change this in a moment, but I want to leave it there so you can see it take effect. So what we're going to do now is we're going to just keep on doing this. We're going to come into, for example, our typography. Open up our body text. From there, we're going to change our color if it's not correct. And you're going to set this to be text body, which again is one of our core framework colors. Come into our headings, you can do the same thing here. So you can see we've got the text title variable selected if it's not already selected. You kind of get the idea. We're mapping those colors we've created with a simplified color part to the actual theme settings inside Bricks itself. So keep on going. So come down, for example, to your button. And from here, you can also do the same thing. So your background color, you can simply click and you can map that, for example, to your primary color. Come into your typography, select it, choose your color. We'll set this in this example to our light color. And you can carry on going through here. And you'll notice that anything you sort of see will take effect as you kind of see it on here. So for example, our primary come into our typography on there, color set correctly. Come into our secondary, we've got the lighter color. Well, let's just choose the option and set the color to be light for the text as well. So you can keep on going. You can set up your options then for your hover, your visited states, and all those kinds of good things. And that will then take effect into your entire design. Once you finish, click on Save, and you have applied those to your overall setup. So now what we can do is we can go back into Core Framework. We want to change any value. So this background color, I don't want this light gray color. I want to change it. So what we're going to do, come into Core Framework. You can see we've got our BG surface and so on, your BG body. Well, there's our light color. Let's click on that, and let's simply set this to be white. Now, for this example, I want to set this white. There we go. So we now change that color, hit Save Changes. And you can see now that our color is set to white. Simple as that. Now if we switch things between the light and dark mode, things are starting to work a little bit better. You can see things are starting to look a little bit more consistent. However, we do still have a couple of issues. For example, this texture is too dark. Now, where does the problem lie with that? Well, this is where we need to go into Core Framework and change a few things. So coming back into Core Framework, you can see we've got the light and dark mode enabled, which gives us the two color chips per color inside our brand background and so on. The first one is what will be used inside the light mode. The second one is what's used inside the dark mode. Now, obviously, in this example, the darker color shade makes no sense, so we need to change it. And the easiest way to do that is to change this from the hexadecimal value to the HSL, or hue, saturation, and lightness. Because so what we can do here is we can choose that second color chip, and we can simply adjust the lightness, keeping the colors the same. This is the easiest way to change things. So what we're going to do is we're going to bump that up so it becomes lighter, like so. We'll do the same thing then for the other colors. So for this example, the color preview in dark mode, we want to do the same thing here. So we need to change this over to HSL. Do the same thing again. I'm going to bump this up so it's lighter. There we go. Now, when it comes to this yellow color, it makes no real sense to have this kind of darker mode. But if we go in and disable the dark mode option, it doesn't work the way we want. So what we're going to do is we're simply going to take this first value. So we're going to copy that. We're going to paste it to the second value. Because whether we're using light mode or dark mode, this color will work equally as well. So don't be afraid to have the same color in light and dark mode if it looks good. Otherwise, you can easily change them. 
So we'll save those changes, come back into Bricks Builder, and you can see now where we've made those changes, it makes a lot more sense. That color now stands out really nicely. Same thing with the buttons and everything, it all looks a lot better. So once you've mapped those colors and you've set things up for your light and your dark modes, you can see you can switch between these and you can have a consistent, great looking design with minimal effort. Now you'll notice if we take a look at the header section at the top, that's still a dark color because a color has been set on it. So again, all we need to do is click on edit our header, select the header itself, choose the style and come into the style section. You can see a background color has been set. Let's remove that. You can see that now picks up the correct color from our global color palette and we'll save that. Now we go back to the page we're working on. You can see the header color is the correct color. And if we switch between light and dark mode, everything works as expected. So again, let's just open this up on the front end to check it out. And you can see we can switch between our light mode and our dark mode. All the colors work perfectly. Same thing if we scroll down, we've got this sort of gallery section. Simply switch between the two and our colors are correct. It is that simple. As long as you map everything correctly, set up your light mode and your dark mode and remove all those extra distractions to set the color palette up to start off with, everything is in place. Now to save yourself having to do this every single time, especially when it comes to the theme style side of things, what you can easily do is come into your theme styles, open up the theme style you've created and name it something that makes sense. If you click on the edit option, you can see we can export this. You can simply click to export it and it'll export a JSON file with all of those settings enabled for you. So then you can add this to a new site as you see fit. However, I would personally recommend taking a look at creating your own blueprint that has all the plugins, the settings and everything Everything configured for you. To learn more about that, you can check out this video where I go through everything I've got set up in my blueprints. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tuts, and until next time, take care.